Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Schroeder. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aaron Sneed. And today we will be discussing individual rights versus public domain. As far as the public domain goes, any work or invention out there that does not require a copyright or a patent for it, basically you don't need anyone's consent or any legal document to use that work, anything that's available in the public domain. Um, as for copyright, copyrights, um, if let's say me and Robert makes a song, uh, and as a group, I, I have the rights to, I have the rights to copy, to have my the work copywritten, and it'll give me five exclusive rights uh, to reproduce, perform, display, derive, and distribute, and that's only if um, that's only if the rights are are still registered. If not, if it's not behind 1920, if it's behind 1923, or the copyrights have expired, then it, like he said, it will be up for public domain. Two major examples of works that's available in the public domain that majority of the world might know is Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet and Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Two songs that uh, still have copyrights would have to be um, a Mystery by Miles Davis and and I want to uh, I want to thank you from Otis Renning. To elaborate more on the two work that I chose as far as being a part of the public domain, we're going to start off with Shakespeare's um, Romeo and Juliet. The reason why I think that's in the public domain, that's been around for years, to be honest with you. Shakespeare died in the 1600s, 1616 to be exact. And yeah, that's a lot of years past. And those, those, that work should be available to the public for public use. And we've seen so many renditions of Romeo and Juliet in the exact same way in different type of ways, spin-offs of it. Yeah. As far as Be Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, that's another same, same exact thing as Shakespeare. It's, it's been it's been years since those were released. I mean, since he did that did that work. I yeah. think it should be available for anybody to use. I can't I can't see why I would want that to be copyrighted. I mean, yeah, how you feel? I mean, um, as best I, I really I really can't agree because like as he says, like it's been around for centuries. Um, William Shakespeare have been around since the 1600s and then uh, when even before even copyrights was even was even promoted or even published that we had to be in it, it like we said earlier it had to be what from 1923 and as you see this is way before that time so but as for me to elaborate the two works I chose I still felt like they're <coughs> that they're still protected under the copyright because even though they they died uh, they died. The song, the songs at which they were made, still probably had, uh, probably have not, have not expired, because um, whoever had the uh, individual rights probably passed them on down to to whoever, whoever was next in line to have to have rights. So, or the person probably got rights then renewed it at that. Yeah, I can't. I can't disagree with that either. Those two songs. What's the, what's the name of those two songs? Um, Mystery by Miles, Mystery Davis. Miles Davis. And I want to thank you by Otis Redding. Yeah. I mean, Miles Davis died nineteen what? Nineteen. Miles Davis. Uh, nineteen ninety one, and yeah. Otis Redding died. He he, he died in nineteen sixty seven. Yeah. Now, those songs were made long before they died, and I don't think the years have ran off yet. Well, that's how I feel about public domain, and. and that's how I feel about individual rights. I mean, we could all agree to disagree if we want to. I, I, would, I would like to get my classmates' opinion on how they feel about it soon. But other than that, that's that's it, right? Yes, I am. Well, my name is Robert Schroeder. It was nice talking to y'all. And again, I'm Aaron Sneed. Thank you. All right.